What's up guys, FM Campbell here, welcome to episode number 12 of the Man United series. Got a couple of things to go through with you before. Um, so we'll start off with the schedule, so we left you off, obviously after the live episode against Aston Villa where we managed to beat them 4-1 in the Premier League. Um, we then went on and as you can see we beat QPR at home in the Premier League at 3-2, so it was a tight victory. Uh, Pogba, Chamberlain and Royce were the goals. Then West Ham we beat 3-1. Uh, James Wilson, Tia Lemons and Yanazai were the goals. And we've just recently beat Man City 2-1. Um, Munir and Royce with the goals for us. So we've had a nice long um, winning streak, which is really, really good. Um, we're going to try and press on for the league now. Um, as you can see, we're four points behind with eight games to go. Um, so hopefully we can sort of catch up with Liverpool and Chelsea and overtake them. Um, as the aim is to try and win absolutely every single trophy available to us. So far we've won all competitions um, or all finals that we've reached. Um, but obviously we're only 1st of April. So we're coming to sort of the business end of the season where we can try and push for absolutely every single trophy. We're still inv involved in all competitions as you can see. As I said, um, we're third in the Premier League. Um, the Club World Championship we've won. Uh, the European Cup or the Champions League uh, we play Arsenal. In the what was that, in the quarter final, so we've yet to play them. We haven't played them yet. So in the all English quarter final, uh, the teams left in that were Dortmund, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico, PSG, and Bayern. Um, Arsenal at the moment are probably quite a nice draw, just because of where they are in the league. They're currently sat in fifth. They're four points behind Everton, and obviously a long way off us in third. Um, we've got a, a big thirteen points. So, um, but yeah, so that it's probably a good time to play them, which is. Always a bonus. So hopefully we can get a win, a nice comfortable win over the two legs um, and progress to the next round. Um, we played the Super Cup, as you know, and we won. We've won that as well. We're in the semi-final in the FA Cup where we're about to play Tottenham. Um, I think we're about, that's our next game, which is, oh no, so we've got Reading in the league. Oh, we've got quite a few actually. Tottenham are on the 15th for this month, so that, that will be in the next update. Um, obviously we're doing a monthly update on the first of every month. Um, the Capital One Cup, as you know, we also won. Um, I believe that we beat Villa. Yeah, we beat Villa 2 0 in that. So a nice victory for us. Um, and then what else do we have? The Community Shield. Um, obviously, oh, we were runner up that, that, that against Southampton, but that's kind of a, a trophy for last year um, after um, obviously winning the league and Southampton won the FA Cup. So we're aiming to win all the available sort of competitive competitions this year. Um, now, what I want to ask you before we go any further. Is now we're dominating. Well, we have we're looking to dominate at the moment. So if we do manage to win all the competitions, what I would like to ask you is: Would you prefer me to finish the series if I win it all this season, or would you prefer me to continue the series for another season until we manage to do it again? So uh, obviously, it was sort of um, I'd say a couple about two weeks ago. I mentioned on Twitter that it was kind of coming up to a sort of a dry spell where because we're winning so much um, it might have been getting a little bit boring for you guys so I mean like I said I literally I play this game um, not just only to entertain myself but to entertain you guys as well it'd be a bit sort of repetitive if I just ca carried on winning absolutely everything um, and with the team that we've got I generally don't think we can get much better um, maybe there's maybe one or two positions that we could improve in but our first team is probably has probably the best player on the game in every position, bar Messi and Ronaldo on the game. Um, but they're obviously sort of never going to be joining unless we fork out a stupid amount of money, which I don't think is is worth um, at all. But um, yeah, so this is this is up to you guys. If we can go and continue and then um, repeat the same um, thing next year and win all the competitions again next year, then I'm more than happy to continue through that. Obviously, we've got a couple of regens are coming through now. Um, we've got some players that um, in the long term we're sort of building a club again we're sort of hitting that period where maybe we start to build around the team that we already have and yeah so let me know what you think let me know if you want me to, to carry on obviously if we do stop the end of the season my main focus will be on the started from the bottom series um, which you can obviously check out on the channel as well that seems to be going quite well and has proven to be quite popular so feel free to check that out too um, but yeah so we'll get back into what's been going on. Um, so obviously we're in all competitions. We've still got some big games coming up. We have Arsenal, as I said, in the, in the quarter-final. 
Um, we've got some big Premier League games, especially that Liverpool game. That'll be a huge, huge game for us. If we can win that, that'll probably really help us push on to win the to go towards the top of the table. But hopefully, we can Liverpool will drop off and drop some points at some point. They'll drop some points at some point. Um, so yeah, they've got some tough games. So they've got Chelsea, Arsenal, ourselves, and Everton over the next sort of couple of Premier League games. But they're not in any other competitions. They were knocked out by um, Real Madrid in the Champions League. But they do have some big games in the Premier League. So, but they have a lot of time to prepare for these. Um, so hopefully we can see how we get on. In regards to Chelsea, um, I don't think they have as hard or oh, they've got a couple. Obviously they've got Liverpool, which I mentioned. Um, they have City in the European Cup or in the Europa League, and they have Norwich in the semi-final of the FA Cup. So we'd probably expect to play them in the final if we do reach it. And they have Tottenham and Southampton. Southampton can be a tough game, uh, especially on this FM. But they're probably their only, uh, and obviously the Liverpool game coming up. But they're only real tough um, games. Other than that, I'll probably top them and Southampton. So hopefully they can drop points as well, because as I said, it is very, very close in the league. Um, four points at the moment to top, two points to Chelsea in second. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed we can catch them and hopefully over and overtake them as well. <clears throat> so there was a request made, um, as you can see here, um, for me to have a look at and go through you guys, uh, go through with you guys with the tactics that I play. Um, now I play three different tactics. Um, most of the time I play two. Um, this is probably my most popular tactic that I play. Um, I'll play with like a four-two-three-one. So we'll have a look at this now in a little bit more in more in depth. Um, it's, this is a very very attacking possession based um, slash sort of direct sort of tactic, if you like. It's kind of a it crosses with each other. Um, so we'll look at the formation first of all. So we've got a four two three one as I mentioned. Um, De Gea in goal is always our number one choice. We've got Luke Shaw at left back and Raphael at right back. These are both complete wing backs, so I expect them, these guys to be getting forward, especially as Royce's preferred movement is to cut inside, um, even though I do have him set as a winger. Um, so he will kind of do two jobs for me. And then Sterling is an inside forward on the right, so it almost goes to a 4 3 3 um, when we're really attacking. And then we've got uh, an attacking uh, advanced playmaker in behind to sort of just sort of swap the passes off left, left right, and centre. But yeah, so I expect Shaw and Raphael to really offer some support when we're going forward. And getting an overlapping past Sterling and Royce and getting some crosses in to help us guys out and hopefully score as many goals as possible. We are on a bit of a goal frenzy, scoring plenty of goals this season, which is good. Um, two central defenders, nothing really to explain there. Um, I like them both to stay back at most at all times, but I do like them to go forward on things like corners, um, especially uh, these two guys who are great in the air and great at jumping. So they do get a lot of goals from corners. Moving into central midfield, we have a deep line playmaker who is Strootman. Um, this guy normally is obviously in defence, so he will sort of sit back and drop into like this sort of anchor man role. Well, not necessarily anchor man role, but in the anchor man position, and uh, just sort of pick the ball off. A bit like what Carrick does in the current Man United team, to sort of settle the game, keep the ball, play the ball nice and short. No need to be going for Hollywood long balls all the time, but just retain the possession, which I think is massively key in this formation. Um, Pogba has kind of a free role, in, in my opinion, in a sort of a centre midfield support. Um, I just like him to sort of roam around all of these areas. Um, one of the bonuses about him as well is his long shots of 20. So if he does get the ball outside of the box, um, I'm more than happy for him to have a go because the likelihood of him at least hitting the target is quite high. Uh, but yeah, so he has a very much a free role, supporting all the players around him, coming to get the ball from the defenders. Um, one of the biggest things as well is he will sort of step and these will sort of become a three like this and Pogba will quite often come in these sort of areas. Um, so I do like him to get forward because of his long shots and things like that. And obviously Ox will sort of, especially if Royce comes in, Ox may step out to sort of out here. That's when Pogba would then sort of sit beside him and it would almost go to a 4-4-2. Four, four, um, but that's just in the sort of in the general in play when we're going forward. Um, other than that, I like... Basically, because Strootman will drop in, Pogba will then sort of play around these areas and he will come and get the ball off Strootman and then swat it off to one of the three guys going forward. Um, because these two sort of work together really, really well, I don't really require Royce and Sterling to get back too much. Um, obviously, Raphael and Shaw are normally quite high, but there's actually a bonus to that i found in this game so far. Because their wingers will always sort of pick up the ball in these sort of areas, i found, um, these are always pretty much on their heels straight away. 
especially as I play quite an attacking game where we dominate possession and we sort of attack quite a lot. So any sort of clearances that the defence may usually make are either hitting the striker, which is marked by, or the two strikers, which is marked by our defenders, our centre backs, or our high wing backs or, or complete wing backs. So I do find that even though they're sort of by themselves without Royce and Sterling getting back too much, they're pretty much on the heels of the winger at all times. Um, and normally, most of the time, their wing backs are normally concentrated on our two wingers anyway. So there's not often uh, a high amount of times where players will be getting forward down the wings. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of explaining the defence and the centre midfield. So we move forward into our sort of attacking three. Now, obviously, Royce we've got as a winger, but he does like to, um, his personal, one of his preferences is after to come inside. Um, so he'll be getting the balls in as much as possible. If not, I want him running at defenders. I mean, whether that means cutting inside, then it's an absolute bonus. Um, Ox will then sort of play around here quite often as well, depending on where Royce and Sterling move and their sort of movements. But I like him to keep a nice sort of simple playing the balls type game, keeping the possession, passing the ball often. Um, especially if we can get a nice through ball through to um, even Munir or Lukaku, who's currently injured, and then James Wilson as well um, as a third choice. Um, so yeah, Ox has quite a key role, and one of the biggest things as well is I've got him in attacking, so he does get forward, and he does make it a two up front, and then sort of the formation will adjust to um, any sort of movement going on in the whole pitch really, but especially um, with Ox, or normally Juan Mata actually, um, who I do often, most of the time, having the 10 role. Um, so that's probably our strongest formation there, along with Lukaku um, up top. Um, the striker, this very much sort of um, changes game to game, depending on the type of centre-backs that he's playing against. One of the main things that I do like about Lukaku especially is he's so powerful. His strength is 19, which has come down from 20, unfortunately, because of his injury. Um, but he's just been so, so good for us this season. Um, he's got 39 goals in 31 appearances, which is absolutely ridiculous. And bearing in mind he's been out for God knows how long already, he's still the top scorer in the Premier League. Um, so that kind of illustrates how many goals he's getting, just because of the support he's getting from these three, I guess. Um, but I do like to use him as a target man sometimes, just because of his power, his jumping, his heading ability. Um, but I have found that centre-backs are quite dominant in the air on this game. So I do sort of adjust um, to what he sort of preferred and I do like to play with a deep line forward in the attack or an advanced forward in the attack but normally an advanced forward because I do like him to sit on the defenders and any sort of clearances that we may need to make or if we go direct at any point um, he can obviously um, quite easily do the job that was required of, of just holding up the ball getting the ball down and maybe playing it off to the front three or even getting the ball and having a go at the defenders and one of the bonuses about Lukaku like Pogba is he has got a great shot on him so he's always shooting with power and always getting shots off on goal, and nine times out of ten they do hit the target, which is awesome for um, a formation such as this one. And with the individual instructions or the team instructions, I'll probably go through first. <clears throat> so I'll either sort of adapt, either retain possession or more direct, depending on the team they're playing. Um, if we're dominating a team, if it's a lower league team, we're always retaining possession. We're not getting them any time on the ball. Um, we're just keeping the ball between ourselves and just building up the play, and then obviously. With that, I will then work the ball into the box. So just sort of a little bit kind of kind of ticky tacker, but because of some of the players that we have, they're quite powerful and quick. Um, it's good to sort of play off um, Lukaku quite often and to sort of like play little through balls, not um, here, there, and everywhere. Not necessarily always to feet. Um, so short passing, I I I tend not to touch. I kind of leave that to the players' preferences anyway. Um, but at the minute, we're, we're in, uh, I'd normally go to sort of retain possession, work ball into the box. I just absolutely dominate the game. Um, sometimes, obviously, we'll go more direct, especially if we're um, sort of 75th minute and we're chasing that winner, um, or if the formation begs for a sort of a target man like Lukaku, <clears throat> we'll go a little bit more direct. Um, I always clear the ball to the flanks because um, Royce and Sterling sit a little bit higher. Defenders are always clearing it out this way, and if it's ever hits all our wing backs, they'll just sort of clear the ball down the line. And we've almost then got like a front three, um, sometimes a massive supporting as well, or, or whoever's in this role, um, to then kind of support them almost immediately. It's very much sort of um, two different teams. We have a defensive team and an attacking team, and these four normally are quite high up the pitch, although Massa does drop in, and then Pogba and Strootman will kind of drop in here. And we kind of had this sort of, Effect Matter may drop into here as well, so the ball will be cleared to Royce and Sterling, who then should have 
Um, a should be forcing back their wing backs, and B um, may give us sort of a little bit of an out an outlook on and a counter attack quite often. Um, more on the team instructions and whipped crosses. I just like I said, I think that that centre backs are quite dominant in the air on this game. So a whip cross um, is quite encouraging for to get players, especially quick players, onto the ball in the box quicker than the defenders, um, and it does quite often actually turn out to be goals. And um, that may be whipped in the air, maybe whipped on the floor, so it can it can alternate. But normally our our strikers and our wingers are quicker, um, especially as, if they're coming inside, um, and getting the ball before the defenders. Uh, run at defence just because we have such good players and such good with such good dribbling skills, especially like when I mean, we've got Royce here. Um, he's only 14, um, which, but he does seem to run at defenders quite well. We've got Master there with 16, although I do encourage him to pass more than dribble the ball. Um, Raheem Sterling with 17. So the three of them uh, get running at the defenders quite often, especially if they want to close us down often because um, it draws defenders out and creates that space in behind um, quite a lot. Um, look for the overlap. That just goes hand in hand with the Raphael and Luke Shaw complete wing back roles. They'll get forward and overlap Sterling and Royce, as I mentioned. And my defending, I don't really touch this too much. Sometimes I'll do close down more um, and use tighter marking. They're probably the two that I use the most. Um, just because, um, basically, if I'm holding onto a win, if we're 2-1 up with 10 minutes to go, I want my players marking their players nice and tightly um, and just sort of making sure that they don't sort of get a quick snap chance at goal. So yeah, that's it's pretty self-explanatory to be honest with you. And my general instructions: I always, always, always play with a high tempo, no matter what. Um, I I don't really understand. If you play a slower tempo, I, I found that um, the opposition will have more time to close you down and maybe limit the pass. Um, I do get like when you want to slow the game down and you want to dictate the play, um, but nine times out of ten, with the formation like this one, you want to be playing the ball quickly because we've got such high players up the pitch. Um, it'd be a bit silly to sort of wait for them to come back, and by that time you may be a little bit sort of limited with your passing that you can play. Um, the other one is be more disciplined. I, I'm always disciplined because we have these sort of two units within the team. Um, I'll quite often, I'd say nine times out of ten, always be more disciplined. Um, the individual players, like if I want them to be a little bit more expressive, I will let them do so, um, or maybe tell them in their sort of individual instructions. Um, uh, but I think just being more, being more expressive is just really, really risky to sort of allow teams to roam out of their positions, uh, allow our players to roam out of their positions a bit too much, uh, maybe try too hard um, to sort of get forward, and it may, you may be sort of reluctant to a counter-attack, which with a possession-style play um, is very sort of reluctant to a counter-attack. So it does suit smaller teams, I think, sometimes when you're more expressive um, and you give them sort of that freedom. Um, so that's the individual instructions. Um, our team shape, I just normally stick with structured um, just because it kind of matches our philosophy where we have a sort of a defensive stage and an attacking stage. As you can see here, with this approach, um, players expect us to contribute to fewer phases of play with a flexible philosophy than, than with a flexible philosophy. So centre defenders, centre, the central defenders are responsible for only for the defensive phase and the fullbacks are more defensive midfielders. As you can see, obviously, they're their complete wing backs, so they do sit in this role quite quick, uh, quite often, which is kind of in the same sort of role as um, uh, the defensive. Well, in the same sort of line with the defensive midfielder, um, who is Strootman nine times out of ten. Um, <clears throat> what else do we have? Um, so the full yeah, the full backs are more de more defensive midfielders and are responsible for both defensive and tr transition phases. That obviously links with our complete overlap or, or, or complete overlap our overlap play. Um, so they'll be more responsible for the transition, the playing the ball through um, and getting forward whenever possible. Um, the wingers are more attacking midfielders. As I said, that the front four probably stay quite high, especially the two wingers and the striker. Uh, so yeah, the wingers are more attacking midfielders and are responsible for transition. So getting the ball, especially with a clear ball to flanks um, and attacking phases. And the forwards are responsible only for the attacking phase. So I very rarely see Lukaku pass the halfway line unless the defenders are playing a high line. Um, the team will be expected to keep its shape and play precise and controlled football with players allowed, uh, allowed less creative freedom. That goes hand in hand with our instructions of be more disciplined. So it's very, very straightforward formation. Um, it has so many different aspects and um, things that 
sort of adapt during the game, um, but it's proven to be very, very effective. Um, but yeah, so this is this is my preferred formation that I play the majority of the time in the season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite self-explanatory. If you want to pause it at any point, just to sort of see um, what I actually, how I lay it out, maybe if you want to look at the individual instructions or team instructions, then you can do so. Um, so yeah. Then we have the 4 one, two, two, one. So this is when I play against big teams, especially when I play against big teams in the Champions League away. Um, I'll sort of like to sit on the ball a little bit more and then counter. Um, so I'll, maybe you're kind of expecting the, your opponents to play, especially if you play like a Bayern Munich in the Champions League or a Barcelona especially. It's probably a better an example to give. They're going to want a lot of the ball. They're going to they're be playing the type of game that we like to play um, in our 4 2 three, one. So we've got exactly the same sort of formation at the back. We've got two central defenders, two complete wing backs in Shaw and Raphael. And then in the defensive midfield, basically Strootman is automatically dropped back into the deep line playmaking role in a sort of defensive um, mindset. Then we have Pogba in his free role still um, to get around. And Mata is just slightly deeper than in sort of the central attacking midfield role. He's more of a centre midfielder next to Pogba. Um, with Pogba and Strootman behind Mata, it gives Mata kind of like this freedom to get forward and maybe support the front the front three. But what that means is Mata is expected to do a little bit more sort of defensively. So I'll quite often change this to fluid or flexible um, in the team shape. Nine times out of ten it is flexible. Um, so yeah, the front three, uh, the mid, sorry, the middle three have a real big role in this. This is more of a fake three three as I've called it in previous episodes. A four one two two one or fake free free where it's sort of this unit can be a defensive unit and then th these three are obviously are out are out set for any counter attacks we've got Royce and Sterling with exactly the same roles as the previous formation um so Royce is a winger to cut inside and get get inside and get forward to support Lukaku as much as possible and Sterling as an inside forward to sometimes almost become um a second striker um now Lukaku is a deep line forward because he's up there by himself with no one behind if the ball's ever sort of cleared into this sort of region, Lukaku can drop in and it can allow Sterling and Royce to get forward in between them. So he is more expected to be in a support role, um, as you can see, deep line forward in support. So you can sort of maybe flip the ball on or hold the ball, get it down, allow these two to get beyond him and then play a ball through ball to them. He would then be expected to obviously get back into the area and sort of create that sort of one-two um, aspect of the game. Um, so that's pretty self-explanatory, really. Uh, Strootman does not move from this role in here. Quite often, he'll slot back into the defence, defence sort of centre back role, um, almost like a libero, but not quite behind the front two, uh, the, the back two, sorry. Um, but yeah, Raphael and Shaw are then given that freedom to get forward when we do attack, uh, just because Strootman is there for the support and they can sort of get beyond and round him. And then we've got Pogba and Mata, who are great passers of the ball, um, just su support in front of Strootman. And then obviously, as, as I explained about the front three, our team instructions are a little bit different. We go a little bit more direct as we're kind of a further up the field. And I think it's silly to start with try and play possession football against possession football. Um, although because Strootman is deeper, I do like to play out of the defence. And rather than all the time someone just smashing the ball up the pitch, if we can give it to Strootman, who can then sort of play it to Pogba and Mata and then whip it out to Sterling and Royce, um, it is a lot better. But if we do have that... Um, occasion where we need to hit Lukaku obviously he's in that deep line forward role and we can do so quite quite easily um, yeah so we've got whip crosses as normal just because like I said about the defenders being quite dominant in the air so floating crosses are usually suspect to um, be cleared by the centre backs then obviously run at defence it will buy um, our team a little bit of time to maybe organise especially if we're sort of under the cosh um, much higher tempo as I said I always play and be more disciplined I'll always play as well um, a lot of the time when I play against bigger teams, they ha normally have very technical, quick and good strikers. So these are like your your Messi's, your Suarez, uh, Neymar at Barcelona, for example. Um, then you've got like Lewandowski at Bayern and whoever they may have bought. So you have to be very, very careful with them. So I think it's silly to be tight marking on them um, as they probably will beat your defenders to the ball, um, especially as just they're just that good. Um but yeah, so but I do do close down ball a little bit more because we have got more players sat back. If, for example, Strootman needs to go and close someone down or Zuma needs to close someone down, and we do have some cover with Strootman, and we'll always have four at the back no matter what. 
Um, so yeah, but I'll, I'll often play that if I just want to slow the ball down. Um, but yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we always play on the counter, as I said, because we don't have that many players high up the field. Um, so we'll play on the counter, get them to hold it up, or get them to run at the defence and be sort of very, very quick and pacey around their defenders to sort of hit them on the break. And then, depending on how then the game goes, I'll then adapt it between the two formations. So on to the third formation. We play a 4-4-2. This is a very narrow, this is very similar to... Um, the current Man United 4 one 2 one 2 system um, that they have been playing. <clears throat> With this one, um, I, to be honest with you, I probably played this about twice all season. This is when I'm desperate for a goal. Um, basically, I want to. it just allows me to have two strikers. Or the other case scenario is if I don't have enough wingers available, if they're not fit or it's injury, I'm having injury problems, something like that. So you can tell how rarely I will be playing this formation. Um, but yeah, you kind of get the idea. It's a very, very attacking. So we've got complete wing backs as normal. The back four again stays the same. Obviously, the herring goal. Um, Strootman is an anchor man, and he will just sort of sit, and there'll almost be a five. But that allows Pogba and Mata, um, who are normally box to box. Well, Mata's a box to. Uh, well, I say Mata. It probably wouldn't be Mata in this case. Uh, Mata would probably be in here, and I'd probably play. Um, Pogba in the box to box, and then as a ball winning midfielder, I would probably play either Lucas Romero um, or Daly Blint in the sort of in the ball winning midfield just to sort of win the ball. And basically, Pogba, Mata, Lukaku, Royce, and Sterling have kind of a freedom to sort of really have a little bit of interchange play in here. I would probably go more control, as you can see. We keep the ball, we build the ball down the middle, um, but it's very suspect to counters down the wings because. Um, their wing backs basically don't have anyone to mark but it does dominate these three will be dominating their sort of central defenders um, as much as possible so it's quite self-explanatory this one it's get the ball down it's pass it through all the way up directly up to the pitch to, to the top of the pitch where we will have um, normally Lukaku will be in here and a second striker so normally Munir um, who can play on the wing as well so he'll be able to peel out wide quite often um, but yeah, it's basically knock the ball through, get it forward nice and quickly to our front men and see if we can get some chance on goal. It's very, very flexible as well. Um, I do like players to get, as I said, to get forward and to sort of interchange between themselves, which is quite key, I think, in this formation. If Mata breaks out to the left, for example, it may require Pogba to sort of step forward into here and Strootman would always sit um, and then sort of whoever's here would maybe sort of do the ball winning stuff around. But because he's sort of in a... Uh, Pogba's in like a um, support central midfield role. He's kind of expected to do all of this, um, which is quite key. It's probably one of the most key positions um, in this formation for me. Um, the instructions wise, I don't often do any um, other than uh, work the ball into the box, uh, retain possession. Um, I don't really touch the crosses because I don't really expect anyone to be able to do many crosses. Um, I don't clear the ball to flanks because there isn't anyone on the flank. Um, the only time that Raphael and Shaw make it forward would be times when we would um, probably uh, get some crosses in. Um, always do the high tempo as normal and I'm more expressive. As I said, we are trying to chase a goal usually in this and obviously look like overlaps always on with Strootman covering in with the centre-backs. Um, a good thing as well with the look for overlap is if Strootman has to sit in, Zuma can step out, or if not, Pogba can come in here. So that will quite often happen as well, because Raphael may get up here. And with them, at least we've got this sort of cover across, and Streetman and Pogba can work together. Zuma may sit out there, so we've kind of always got this kind of wall, which does work and can be quite effective, and, and has been quite effective in chasing some goals, as you may have seen in some live episodes. Um, but yeah, so it's obviously a, a very controlled tempo. Um, sometimes I'll go attacking. Um, but it's normally in between control and attacking. I do like to keep the ball in this though. Because we are going so attacking and we are getting players forward, it'd be silly to sort of be wasting the possession and allowing them to sort of attack back. So we have to be, still be very careful. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's probably the three formations explained. Um, like I said, I do normally play this, the 4-2-3-1. Um, and that's probably our strongest team. 
so yeah, let me know if there's any other questions that you want to ask. Let me know if there's any requests that you would like me to go through that I haven't maybe been through as in much detail. Um, like I said, I do I do answer all comments. I do reply to comments. I do um, answer or come up with any um, sort of things to go through that people may be curious about. Um, so feel free to do so. But yeah, thanks very much for asking that question. I, I do appreciate it. And it helps me to create content where you know exactly what I'm playing and how I do it. Um, some people may do things differently. Some people may have watched this video and thought, well, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't I wouldn't play Royce as a wing. I'd play him as an inside forward. I'd maybe play Royce on the right and Sterling on the left and have him cut in. Um, it is very much um, to your own preference. But that's that's the way I play. Um, so yeah, get any co comments or questions in, in the comment section below. Um, feel free to subscribe if you're new to the video, if, if, you're, new, if you're new to the channel. Um, feel free to like the video if you've, if you've enjoyed this or you feel this is helpful. I ain't going to force you, but um, it helps me out. Um, so I'm just trying to think of what else has happened since then. I'm, I'm, we've had a lot of transfer activity. Um, what date did we actually leave? What date was it when we left here? I can't remember if I'd already been through stuff. It says the Premier League game, or was it the Capital One Cup? We played Villa, and all I can remember was we playing Villa. It might have been the Capital One Cup. I don't even remember. Shall we check it? Let's check it. Just in case. So let's go to the channel. I'd rather make sure I'm covering absolutely everything. Uh, Capital One Cup final. So we have missed a couple of games. Um, so let me quickly go through them with you now. Um, so yeah, Capital One Cup final. As you know, we won 2 0. I thought it was a Villa game 4 1. Um, but it was a little bit longer delay than. Oh, yeah, because it would have been the first. So yeah, it would have been the last game of the month. So that makes sense. Right, so Champions League. Um, spoiler alert for earlier on. I told you we got through. We smashed Schalke, or Girls and Kirchen. That's Girls and Kirchen on the game. Um, we beat them 4 0. Um, Lukaku. Chamberlain, Tielemans and Royce all on the score sheet. Um, that meant that we absolutely battered them 9-2 on aggregate, as you can see. Everton we then played in the FA Cup 6th round to help us to qualify. Um, beat them 4-1. Um, Balanta unfortunately scored an own goal. Lukaku with two goals. Sterling and Mata. And then we get onto the Villa um, game that I've already explained with the Chamberlain hat-trick. And it would have been an own goal by them as well. Um, Jack Grealish own goal. So apologies for that. I actually thought it was the Villa game in the Premier League, not the Villa game in the Cup. But now that does come back to me that we did the Cup draw as well in the Cup. Uh, sorry, no, we wouldn't have done the Cup draw. Is that different? That might have been the start from the bottom episode. I'm getting myself confused. Anyway, so going forward, the next game that we will be covering, uh, well, it'll be the first. So we're Tottenham with the first today. Um... Yeah, we have got Tottenham today. I thought we had Tottenham today. Um, yeah, so the next game that we'll be covering will be the first, well, covering from, um, will be January, February, March, April. So that's fourth, yeah, so that's right. So we've got that game today. Um, 19th, 23rd, 26th, 29th. So it'll be the 1st of May, won't it? So it'll be after the Huddersfield game. That'll be a big update. So there's a lot going on during this time. Um but yeah, so transfer activity. When was the capital? When was the capital cup final? So it's the twenty sixth of the second. Uh, where are we? Right. So transfer activity of the second. No, so we, we've got all transfer activity. Oh no. Yeah. So we're actually covered in all transfer activity anyway. So that's good news. Um, yeah, so let me know if there's anything else you want me to ask. Um, maybe you want me to go through my coaches. Maybe you want me to go through different things. Just let me know in the comment section below. Um, sorry this episode has been long, but it's a common question I've been asked about my tactics. So um, I wanted to go through that like, with you guys in a little bit more depth. But I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I'll see you in the next update, which is a month away, uh, 1st of May. And thanks very much for watching again. Take care. Cheers, guys.